All right, thanks for coming. So today we're gonna to learn a little bit about stair climbing and we're gonna go over some tips and tricks. The first thing to know is that stair climbing is mostly mental. If you're a recreational stair climber, it's gonna be about 60% mental. So about 60% your brain, how tough your brain is. If you're an elite stair climber, it's about 80% mental. And just learning a few tips and tricks, like you're gonna to learn today in this class, and just practicing them one time will shave 10% or more off your time. So it's amazing how much there is to know about stair climbing. Most people don't realize because they climb stairs every day and they think it, oh, it's gonna be a cinch. And how hard can it be? And it's really basic, but you learn pacing and mental techniques and physical techniques and railing and all that kind of stuff to help you amazing amounts of time. Just shave off a bunches and bunches of time. So it's also important to know that stair climbing is pretty much the safest sport you can do as long as you're going up the whole time because it's low impact. It's lower impact than walking. So I also want to introduce my surrogate mom here, Shirley. Shirley is, I've known Shirley for what, 40 years and she's 80 and she's training with us. She does 63 floors every Saturday morning and she is going to be here to help answer your questions as well. So she's one of your coaches too. So yeah, let's give a hand for Shirley. And even people with knee replacement surgery can do stair climbing. I mean, it's that safe and it's that gentle on the joints, but it's also one of the hardest events that you can do on the muscles, which is good because then you get stronger and you get more toned faster than other types of cardio. So going down, however, is a different story. And if you do these stairs today more than three times, you're going to be sore for a few days. So it's not a bad thing, but just know that going down is the part that makes you sore. Going up will never make you sore. If you train in a building somewhere, and I would recommend that, if you do work in a building, use your building and then take the elevator down. You'll never get sore. The concentric contraction of a muscle won't make you sore. It's the eccentric contraction, the going down, the lengthening while contracting that makes you sore. Track hack. How many people have had a cough after a stair climb? Okay, that's called track hack. And other people call it hike hack. Brian's a mountain runner and, and mountain runners call it hike hack. A lot of people make the mistake of assuming that it's, it's poor air quality in the stairwell or maybe it's really dusty in the stairwell and so they have their complaints you know, to the, the building management and, and Wilma who runs the big climb and all this, but it's not that at all. The air in the stairwell is just as clean, just as good as outside of the stairwell. What's happening is you're actually eroding your airway with high volumes and rapid volumes of, of air. And when you erode your airway, you're irritating it and it gives you that cough. And that combined with a really high heart rate, elevated blood pressure, which is normal when you exercise like this, all that stuff, you can actually break blood vessels with that erosion and the elevated pressure increases. And some people will even taste blood in their mouths, like a metallic taste, if they push it really hard. But this track hack is normal, and it can last three or four days, but the way to get around it is to train, because as your airway experiences the velocity and the volume of that air, it also gets tougher. So that gets better. And the other thing you might try is to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Try that most of the time. And that can help too because then you're spreading around the load between your nasal passages and your throat. Now, the first burn that you feel, and you'll probably experience that today on these stairs, these stairs are equivalent to about 13, 14 stories. And maybe the second time up, you'll start to feel that burn. That's the first burn. That's a pseudo burn. That's not real. It might feel real, but it's not really real. 
Yeah. So what's happening is your body is just engaging its lactic acid energy system and it's starting to um, realize, okay, gosh, I'm doing something here. And that first burn is the one that you can know that you can push through and it'll go away. And the reason it'll go away is because your body's gonna start kicking out endorphins because you're starting to hurt and your lactate energy system gets in the groove and starts activating and taking care of the lactic acid. The second burn is the real burn. And these first burns and second burns happen at different points for different people. But now that you know that first burn, you can push through it. And then you're gonna feel okay for a while. And then the second burn is where your brain gets involved. And that's the one where you're really pushing and you're just gutting it out and going for it. Now, when you're stair training, whether you're doing it on stairs like this or whether you're doing it in a building, your initial times are gonna drop in chunks. So every time you go, you're gonna shave 10, 15, 20 seconds off your time. That's your nerves learning how to do stair climbing and your endurance increasing. Your muscles aren't really involved yet. And after about half a dozen times, then that starts to slow down. You don't drop in such big chunks anymore because now it's your muscles taking over. Your nerves have learned what they need to learn and now your muscles are improving and that, that's a slower process. So when you get to that point, you may even see your times increasing on certain days. But don't let that discourage you because it's up and down along the way, but over time it's up. So even if you have an off day, so what? Stick it behind you, next time will probably be better, and you go for it. So don't get too wrapped up in your times. And try different rail techniques. Now today, that's gonna be tough because the rails are so far apart. It's not like a building stairwell, but, and this is in the booklet, um, different world-class runners do different rail techniques. You know, some are both hands at the same time, others are alternating hands, some are the inside rail only, climbing it like a rope, some kind of push and pull and use it like a crutch. So experiment today just on one side with different techniques and play around with it. And every time you train, try a different technique and you'll find your best technique because there really is no best technique. And I have the, I've had the pleasure of meeting all the top stair climbers in this country and I know half of the top 10 personally, and I hope to be in there someday, but these guys all have different techniques. So try your own and find your own. Get used to two-stepping. So use single-stepping to rest and recover and get ready for some more two-stepping. But if you want a fast time, you're gonna need to two-step the whole way. That just, that just means skipping a step. So, if you need to slow down and single step, that's great, but then just be mentally prepared, try to do that minimal and get back to two-stepping and do that as much as you can. It's better to go a little bit slower and do two-stepping than to go fast one-stepping. So get used to that technique if you want a fast time. 